Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna continue our mission to try to create a tutorial for every single tier two challenge in the library at TooTallToby.com. So here we can see when we go to the library at TooTallToby.com, we can filter the challenges based on difficulty. We could start out here at tier one. Well, we've already completed all of these and posted a tutorial for all of these. So let's move on to the tier two challenges. And today's challenge is gonna be this one here, 24. 10-02. So click here to begin. We can see this is called plastic flange. We're going to be doing the whole tool, tool patterns revolve sy symmetry. Let's see what this thing has to offer. There's been 487 people who have successfully solved this thing, and the average solve time is 7 minutes and 22 seconds. Let's see if we can beat that average solve time. So here we go, and... Go. So the question here is, what is the mass of this part in 0.xxx pounds? And we're going to try to enter that mass in right down here. The tolerance is plus or minus 0.002 pounds. And this model is an IPS, meaning inch pound seconds, and an ABS. And this model looks like it's going to be a revolve. So whenever I start 3D modeling, I always ask myself some basic game plan questions. And one of those questions is, where should the origin be? Well, when a model is revolved, meaning we're going to start out with a sketch that looks a little something like this. And then we're going to have a center line running right up through the middle here. So we'll have a center line like this. And then we'll take that shape and we'll kind of like spin it or revolve it about the center line, leaving us with this shape here. You know, aside from some of the holes, maybe we'll even include those those holes in that original sketch. But the point is that whenever we do that, we're going to end up locating the origin right along that center line, right along this red line here. And usually when I have a revolved part, I just put the origin right at the center and right at the bottom of the part. So I think for this model, my first sketch is going to look a little something like what we see here in section AA, that shape that I drew a moment ago. Like I said, maybe I'll include that internal geometry in that sketch. So we'll create a sketch that looks like this. And then my second sketch, I will create one of these holes here. And then for my third feature, I'll do a circular pattern to revolve that hole around. I like to do one hole and then make a pattern because it makes it really easy if I want to change that to six or eight instances of the hole, as opposed to sketching four individual circles, which is going to take a little longer if we need to change it. So I know I took a minute and a half there to come up with a game plan, but I think it's always a good idea to come up with a game plan before we start 3D modeling. And if you agree, be sure to hit the like button on this tutorial. And let's move this clock over here so we can keep an eye on our time. We can keep an eye on the average time down here, seven minutes and 22 seconds. And let's jump into Onshape and try to make this thing happen. So I'm gonna choose to create this document in the public space. I'm gonna call it 24-10-02 plastic flange so if you ever want to see this model you can just search the public space here in on shape and you can search for that text string and then the first thing i'm going to do is change my units i work in millimeters most of the time so if i ever have to work in inches i have to come in here to workspace units so you go up here to this hamburger menu and then you change that workspace units and we're going to change this to inches we're going to change our weight here or our mass Two pounds hit the green check mark and now we're ready to jump into the game plan so front plane s key begin a sketch n key to get normal to s key to sketch a line and i'm going to create a line here i think i'll start out here at the origin and just make a line vertical so i'll press the letter q here and i'll make a vertical line and i'm going to say that line is going to go up to a height here of five inches that's the max height of this thing and that'll help me kind of keep keep an eye on my uh, overall scale kind of my overall proportions and then a lot of times when I'm doing a revolve, I'll just kind of eyeball up the rest of the sketch. I'll just kind of drop in what I think the sketch should look like. And then I add the dimensions uh, after the fact. So I'll press the letter S here. I'll choose the line command. I'm going to start out with a line here that starts out horizontal from the origin and over a bit. Single click, move my mouse over. Single click, move my mouse up. Single click, move my mouse over. Single click, move my mouse up single click move my mouse over single click it's not quite as wide as that original line so i'll kind of come here a little bit a little bit more narrow single click move my mouse up here now this one i do want it to be horizontal to this point so i'll just put my mouse over this point and then i'll move over here and that way i'll get that horizontal relationship single click move over this way and then this one is going to come in just a little bit single click move down single click move over and this i do want to be vertical to this point so i'll just put my mouse over that point and then come back up here and now you see it kind of wakes up that vertical relationship. Single click and then move down to the bottom, single click and I'll press escape to get out of the line command. 
So that's kind of how I do it when I'm doing a revolve shape like this. I kind of just like maybe put in one dimension, like the center line dimension, and then drop everything else in there just to kind of get it, the basic shape down on the, uh, on the sketch. And now I'm ready to go through and start adding some dimensions. Now, the cool thing is when you add a dimension here, so S key dimension, and we dimension from this line to the center line, what we can do is we can cross over cross over that center line and that gives us what we call a doubled dimension or a diameter dimension so i'm going to cross over the center line before i click the second time and now when i click i get that that doubled dimension that diameter dimension so that id there is one inch and then i've got an id up here as well single click on that that uh center line cross over that center line that id in the top section is 1.5 inches and then the od here at this top part single click on that center line come across that od is uh, 2.25 inches 2.25 the od for kind of the main shaft area here so cross over that center line that od is 1.75 inches and then the od down here at the base is four inches so here to here cross over that center line and that's going to be four inches and now all i have to do is add in some of these height dimensions so the height to here is 0 0.75 the height here from the top down to this location is 1.75 the overall height here is five inches and then the wall thickness here between this line and this line here is 0 0.375 0 0.375 and the overall height here is defined by this five inches and this point here being horizontal if you wanted to you could add another dimension it's just going to drop in as a driven dimension so when you press enter you'll see it just gives you that dimension in gray and uh, then I could just move these dimensions around to make it a little easier to see that is what you want that revolve sketch to look like so if you create that sketch if you want to pause the video for a second and make sure that your sketch looks like that that's what you want that revolve sketch to look like and then when you're ready you can come up here to the uh, features menu up here and you can choose revolve and this is going to be a solid revolve. So solid. The region that we're revolving is this closed region of the sketch. Onshape picks it up automatically. And then the axis we're going to revolve about is going to be this axis right here. And there you go. You can see that you now have successfully revolved that part. Good job. Good job, everybody. So you pick that revolve axis, pick that center line there, hit the green check mark, and that is your first feature. Now, for your second feature, what you can do is pick this face here, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal to. Oops, N key. Uh, let's try that again. I think I might have picked the wrong sketch face or something like that. And there we go. N key to get normal too. And then we're going to sketch a circle here and we'll single click here on the origin and move our mouse and then we'll single click again. And that circle is going to be our bolt circle or BC. That's got a diameter of three inches. And then here at the quadrant point of that circle, so vertical to the origin right here and then along that circle, we can make another circle here. That's going to be our hole, which has a diameter of 0 0.5. Now at this point, what we could do is we could hit escape. We can click on the bolt circle here here and press the letter Q and that changes that bolt circle to be construction geometry now you don't have to do that it just makes it a little easier when you go to actually do your extrude you you'll see that on shape will automatically pick up on the correct uh, profile to extrude or to cut so now that we've got that bolt circle in there we've got that uh, solid circle in there it's fully defined fully constrained now we are ready to extrude and that extrude is going to be to uh, uh, remove option here remove that means we're going to be creating a hole basically and that's going to go through all and then we're going to hit the green check mark here and boom there is that hole feature. And now the final thing we have to do is just make a pattern of that hole feature. So here we can fly out this menu and we can choose circular pattern. And when we choose circular pattern here, we can say entities to pattern. That's going to be... Uh, uh, it, right now, if you pick entities to pattern, it's going to pick the entire part. So no matter where you click, it's just going to get the whole part. Well, that's because we're doing what's called a part pattern. And we want to change that. We want that to be a feature pattern. And that way... Instead of it saying entities to pattern, it says features to pattern. What do we want to pattern? We want to pattern this hole here. You just click right in the hole. And then for the axis of the pattern, you can just pick this circular face here or the circular edge. Onshape is pretty smart about this stuff. It just kind of knows what you want. So circular face, circular edge, it's all good. And then how many do we want? Do we want six or do we want eight? No, we want four. But the nice thing is if we want to change that in the future, it's very easy to do because we're creating this as a circular feature pattern. 
So we hit the green check mark, and there we go. That is our part. We can do what we call the final spin, kind of look this thing over, make sure that it looks good. One thing I really like about on shape here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift 7, which puts me into an isometric view. One thing I really like about on shape is we can right click on the front plane, and then we can choose section view. We get this really cool section view looking through the part. So if I look at that section view, and then I look section AA on my drawing, those look pretty darn close. And that's what we like to see, a nice little verification there. So I'm going to click this little X here, cancel out of that section view. I'm going to press P to hide my planes. I'm going to come over here to the name of the part, right click, and I'm going to say edit appearance. And for the appearance here, I'm going to make this kind of like a purple appearance, maybe like a lighter purple. Oh yeah, that looks good. The customers always like it when you match up the, the, the colors with their parts. It always makes the customers happy when you do that. And then finally, I'm going to right click here on the name of the part in the parts list, and I'm going to say assign material. And the material we're going to be using comes from the Too Tall Toby custom materials library. I'll include a link down below to the description or in the description to that video. And uh, we can see here we're going to set that to use the material ABS. So we hit the green check mark. We click on this button down here to get the, the mass properties. And we click here anywhere on the part. And we are coming up with a mass of 0 0.609 pounds. And so we move uh, the app back over here. And let's give this a try. 0 0.609 and enter. And oh yeah, we did it. We did it. And we got it correct on the first try. So 0 0.609 pounds. And that is correct. The elapsed time here was 10 minutes, 33 seconds. So a little bit slower than the average time here, seven minutes and 22 seconds. Oh, we actually pulled the average time up there. Seven minutes and 23 seconds now. But of course, I could always go through this challenge again. And I could say that I want to uh, uh, try again now that I know how to do it. Now that I've got the game plan, I could try to go through and model again and see if I could model a little more quickly. Maybe I run into a few less hiccups now that I kind of have a good workflow down. And that's really the whole point of Two Tall Toby's practice models challenges to let you practice and refine your workflows. So if you enjoy these types of challenges, be sure to visit us at TwoTallToby.com. You can sign up and get started for free. And then if you really like the app, you can unlock all these challenges. And if you enjoyed today's tutorial, be sure to hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, and I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next Two Tall Toby step-by-step on-shape tutorial.